Yeah. Am I dancing later? Okay. Huh? Yeah. I'm huh? jealous. That's <laughs> awesome. Drew taught me crazy man. Sure, we can do that. Yeah. Uh, on the way out, you'll see the Super Silly Stuff store is themed to the ending of the ride, and actually from the film to the Super Silly Fun Land. We put it, besides just ending it, without letting it end in the theater, letting guests come and party out here for a little bit, extending the experience, extending the ride, and then finishing it up with what we think is a really great fun area in the, in the attraction as well. So. Asia guys was coming up with the, uh, the little minion guys and things for the outside of the building. We have 33 minions up here putting up the billboards that we grew up in billboards. Uh, my favorite part of all guys that lasted the whole a lot of this one. And the one that's stuck upside down in the middle part. But uh, we want to give the sense, obviously, it was that Minion Madness has taken over the, the park and they started out of the building and hopefully continued through the whole thing. And one of the things we're really trying to do is build in a lot of repeatability into the attraction. So I don't know how much you got a chance to look around at the first room we went into in the crew's living room. That was the first place we really, besides the house and the foyer, is putting guests in a three-dimensional world of Gru and the Minions and his family. So there's a lot of things, there's for the port paintings and the shrink ray gun is in there, uh, Gru's chair, uh, the Iron Maiden, although we had a little touch of putting the tennis balls on it. That was actually from, there's a short, if you watch any of the shorts that came out with the DVD, that's from uh, Home Makeover. But we added a little extra, we put Gru's logo on the tennis balls on top of it. But when you come back, I don't know how many saw the Gru's underwear hanging from the jaws of the piranha of the fireplace. But uh, those little things we, we put in, and even in the, in the main show film, so many little gags that the minions are doing. We want to encourage us when guests come back again and again to see it. They have little, new little things to find. In fact, right now in the pre-show, in the minionization prep room, I tend to just watch the, the minions because they do so many funny little bits with each other that uh, it's uh, they get another layer to look at when you come back and see it again. But it's been a great experience. We've had fun working with the guys at, at Chris's group. And uh, so far, the reaction of the guests has been over the top. So what do you guys all think? Like it? It's yeah. Great. yeah. Good. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a great family experience. I've been in some sometimes on the ride with the, with the guests and the uh, the young girls in the car will be yelling, "Save the present! Save the present!" <laughs> <laughs> so it's been really very rewarding to see the guests enjoying it. And so Minion Mayhem has indeed invaded Universal Studios Florida, and we're glad everybody's here to be part of it. Any questions? How long did it take to build this ride? About a day and a half, no. Uh, <laughs> we started working on it in February of uh, like about a year and a half, which is pretty quick for us. One of the things that we really wanted to do was you know, this this building had uh, the Hanna Barbera attraction and Jimmy Neutron both before this. And we wanted to make sure that this was an entirely new experience, not just from a story standpoint, but from a physical standpoint. So doing things like this on the outside, obviously putting through his house in the front made a great entrance statement for us. And the first room you went into, that room didn't even exist in the old attraction. That's a completely new environment. And it's there for a couple of reasons. Number one, for what I just said, to create some the spaces for us. But also, think about the minion goggles. The group guests are really going to the, the, the minionization prep room. They're all gathered into the groups already. And even things like the goggles, because the, the, the video just like I said, is brand new as are the minion goggles. But the video in that room is all about the goggles. So we want to make it that part of the story. Despicable means the characters are really all about the story. So we want to make sure that carried all the way through. The ride itself, it's a good ride experience, but it's more than just a ride. We want to make sure that every movement on the, on the ride vehicle had something to do with the story that was taking place on the screen. And it seems to carry through very well for us. What was the most challenging part of transforming from the old ride to this ride? Um, well, I, I think the most challenging part was, again, making sure we conveyed this a whole new experience. I mean, it's in the same building, but other than the fact that it's the same structure, that's about the only thing that's left over. The old ride was a film. Uh, the screen in, in here, the video screen is 70% bigger than the old one. Obviously, we have the new 3D high-depth technology uh, video system in there, new sound system, uh, the wide the vehicle chassis is all new. So it was making sure that we could accommodate the story we wanted to tell within this structure. So that's what we wanted to expand some areas and, and we do a lot of the things that you know, the store is completely live, it's completely brand new. So uh, the challenge is always taking that two-dimensional world and, and converting it to three-dimensional reality and making sure you maintain the authenticity of, of the story and the characters. And that's where um, Chris and his guys have really helped. That this, all the scripts were written by the same writers who wrote the script with me in the film and are writing the script with me too. Have written the script with me too right now, I'm sure. Uh, so that was, it's just that balance. And then you have all the parameters, obviously, of safety and operations and timing that you have to make sure work from the park standpoint. 
Um, so it's a lot of things that have to come together, but it, so far it seems to be working pretty well, so we're really happy. Okay, right. Thank you. What is your favorite gag? You mentioned like a lot of like in jokes and things going on. What's your favorite? Oh man, I don't know. There's so many of them right now. Um, I just like watching in the preacher of the maintenance expression when with two on the stools, like you know, he falls off the stool, all those little things you have to watch them to, to see and when who points the things they're making faces or reacting and spotting each other. I was a, a big three stooges fan when I was a kid, so these guys are like three stooges on steroids, you know. They're just great. I love I love the maintenance. They do so many cool funny things. I also love Bruce line when he says, let me think of no. <laughs> I'm gonna use that from now on in decision I mean. Like no. So, it's been good. And uh, and again working with uh, with some people like Steve Carell, you know, uh, I always try to do a character, one of the characters in any show I work on, but I can't touch Steve Carell's group away, so I try to avoid it. Except these guys really know how to part. That's the best thing. I invite you guys to go back and see it again again, right? You know, I did. There's a lot of things to see each time you come on it, so come back and enjoy it and tell all your friends.